Buddhism is a religion to about 300 million people around the world. The word comes from Bodhi, to awaken. It has its origins about 2,500 years ago when Siddhartha Gautama, known as the Buddha, was himself awakened enlightened at the age of 35. Siddhartha Gautama is considered the spiritual leader of Buddhism. He was born into a royal family in Lumbini, now located in Nepal, in 563 BC. At 29, he realized that wealth and luxury did not guarantee happiness, so he explored the different teachings religions and philosophies of the day, to find the key to human happiness. After six years of study and meditation he finally found the middle path and was enlightened. After enlightenment, the Buddha spent the rest of his life teaching the principles of Buddhism, called the Dhamma, or Truth, until his death at the age of 80. He was not Goff, nor did he claim to be. He was a man who taught a path to enlightenment from his own experience. Buddhists sometimes pay respect to images of the Buddha, not in worship, nor to ask for favors. A statue of the Buddha with hands rested gently in its lap and a compassionate smile reminds us to strive to develop peace and love within ourselves. Bowing to the statue is an expression of gratitude for the teaching. Buddha tried his best to attain salvation and know God, but he was failed to achieve and at last, he concluded that starvation could not lead to salvation and believed that there is no God, promoted the agenda of right knowledge and right living. His way of worshipping was not according to the holy scriptures, he followed his own way of worshipping. In Gataji, it's stated in 16 chapter 23 24 slok that Arjun, those who do not follow the way of worshipping according to holy scriptures will not achieve anything. I'll provide a historical perspective. Buddhism spread from India 2,500 years ago. It died out as an active religion there, but continued in three branches. Theravadan in Sri Lanka, Thailand, and Vietnam Vajrayana in the Tibetan highlands, Nepal, Tibet, Ladakh, Bhutan Mayahana in Cambodia, China, Vietnam, Korea, and Japan prior to 1850, no one knew that the way that was practiced in all these countries was descended from one teacher, the Buddha. Each country had its own religious leadership. In 1850, British historians and archaeologists realized that all of these active religions across Asia had one original teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha of North India 2,500 years ago. They coined the word, Buddhism, and presented the history of Buddhism to the world. So Buddhism has never been centralized under one teacher, not since the Buddha passed away. When the Buddha passed away, there was a governing committee by legend composed of 100 arhats, fully enlightened Buddhist practitioners. In history, some Buddhist nations, at times, had centralized leadership. In ancient times, there was an imperial teacher of Zen, but that stopped long ago. Zen is passed down from teacher to student, and there is no one lead teacher among teachers in any generation. In Tibet, the ruling lineage of the 14 Dalai Lamas was the sequence of religious leaders for Tibetan Buddhism, part of the Vajrayana tradition. Today, the 14th Dalai Lama is the head of the government in exile of Tibet and an important leader in the Vajrayana tradition. Thich Nhat Hanh is a highly respected Zen master and Theravadan scholar teacher from Vietnam. He was exiled from Vietnam in 1964 for speaking out for peace and dwelt most of the remaining years in Plum Village, France, while traveling the world to teach. I had the honor of studying with him from 1986 to 1998. He now is quite elderly and resides in Thailand. Buddhism has no overall structure, or leadership. There are different Buddhist traditions, called lineages, such as Tibetan Buddhism, or Theravada Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, etc., but each lineage might or might not have a lineage master, like the Dalai Lama, who is the lineage master for the Gelug tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. To explain this you need to understand how Buddhism is taught. Buddhist masters are monks who have learned the teachings sufficiently and has the ability to speak authoritatively about the teachings. They have received permission to do this from their master. This permission is called being given transmission. The monk could then go to another area, open a monastery and then teach others. If one of his monks then learns the teachings sufficiently, the new master could give transmission to his student, and the cycle continues. Please note that learning the teachings of the Buddha is not memorization, these masters must completely understand and be able to explain the teachings in their own words, and apply them to modern conditions. So Buddhism has a very diffuse structure.